confusion in. But I won't allow it here. I will not allow it here. And some that can't get their spirits right. Hallelujah. It's a shame, you know, to live so close and have a truth that comes forward like it is. But the Bible says if you don't receive the one that God sends, you don't receive him. So I don't care. You cannot ha have Christianity always in your home. You've got to have it in your home as far as producing fruit and praying and seeking God. But you are not an island off to yourself. The Lord said, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. So much more when you see that day approach it. Now tell you what, God is fixing to, to open some people's eyes. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, there's a word that comes here. For it's here that will deliver your soul. The Bible says it's the engrafted word that saves our soul. And this word is getting engrafted. It's taking root. Hallelujah. Even if you don't realize it to a whole lot, you will realize it when the heat of that storm gets there. Hallelujah. That word will stand straight up in you. Hallelujah. And it goes on. It said, if God spared not the angels, that sin. In other words, God's trying to get yourself and thinking that, you know, I have heard many say that, you know, grace covers it all. And some people call it sleazy grace or greasy grace or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, that is not of God. He did not come here and pay that price on the cross in vain. The Bible said he come to save us from our sins, not in our sins for us to keep producing sin. The Bible says whoever you or your member to, that is a servant that you are to that master. And if you are yielding over to sin, then God is not your master. Hallelujah, the devil is. Flesh is. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, if you find yourself doing something like that, you better shake yourself. Hallelujah. And fall on your face and cry out to God. Ask him to have mercy and to forgive. But it said, for if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Peter was wanting us to take note. If God has not spared the angels, you need to take heed to every word that you hear. At least at any time, it be stripped from you. The devil is out there trying to strip the word from you. But he said, hold to it. And if you hold to it, I'll tell you what, it'll keep you. And it goes on, it says, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, the preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Hallelujah. There was only eight people saved out of all that multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of people. I tell you what, this shows you that God will not put up with filth. No, he won't. You know, it's not a gray area there with God. It's either righteous or unrighteous. That's a reason that we have to keep ourselves in check with the Holy Ghost every day of our lives. Because if you don't, things are going to come in unaware. I tell you. The Lord spoke to me many times and told me things and whispered in my ear things that have been said that's even in states away from me. Hallelujah. And people think just because I'm not there, I don't know what's going on. But, you know, they forget that I'm a praying woman. I hear from God. Hallelujah. He don't let me, nothing be hid from me that involves me. Hallelujah. Nothing. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, God has sent me to different ones and I would tell them everything they said. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, that's the way God is. And there's even some here in this own area right here. Hallelujah. Been running their mouths and speaking things that aren't not. And they don't think that I'm aware of it. But yes, I am. God spoke to me and he told me. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I stand upon it. And I'm telling you, children of God, if we don't walk, hallelujah, the way the Lord wants us to walk. We're going to end up with our feet in a snare. But the devil can have his way with us. Hallelujah. Tell you what, I love the Lord. I praise him. And I tell you, when the Lord sent me, and when I spoke to this particular person and told them everything that was said, hallelujah. And I tell you what, I left it at that. 
And there was a person that come to me that was that was in that surrounding and heard it all. She said, everything you said was God. Everything you said is what has been spoken. Hallelujah. I tell you, I don't have to go and hear it from people's mouths. God keeps me informed. Hallelujah. And believe me, let me tell you something. I try the spirits when they talk to me. I try and see, try them and see whether they be of God or not. I try them up against this word of God. And I tell you what, that's it's line upon line. It's precept on precept. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, God always watches out for me. And he'll watch out for you. He's no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God is good. And I tell you what, if you'll hear a true minister, they will take you on in. Hallelujah. But at any time, and I'm and myself included, at any time you see that my tree is not producing good, holy, righteous fruit unto the Father, you need to walk away from me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that. Hallelujah. Out of the Spirit and the anointing of God. But as long as I'm praying and dedicating my life and preaching truth and, and nothing but the truth, because the truth, there is no lie in it. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, God will always approve His Word. Yes, He will. He'll prove it every time. Hallelujah. And when God has got His hand upon your life, and you're seeking Him and nothing but Him, and that's what's in my heart, I'm seeking after the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. And I tell you what, he'll take care of everything else. You know, the Lord has people come up and meet my needs before I even ask for it. Hallelujah. In prayer. Hallelujah. And that's the way God is. He's always like that. I'm not saying there ain't time that we're going to go and ask. Yes, it is. But I tell you what, God is always there to provide for us. If we do what we're supposed to do, hallelujah, preparing and making preparation and doing things that God tells us to do, he's always right there. To defend us, to protect us, to keep us. Hallelujah. You know, someone said that, you know, that if we did store up some food, and, and I, I, I say that you need to store up as much as you can and rotate it and keep it fresh so that you'll have some food on hand when all this hits and water. And make sure that you learn how to store water and make sure that it all stays good. Hallelujah. And what God has been allowing me and helping me to gather together, many times I give out of that, and that keeps it fresh. And it keeps God bringing more and more in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I tell you what, if we do what we can do, then God will take care of the rest. And if we are not able to put up a whole lot, if we can do three to six months worth of food, it would help. Hallelujah. And God will make that last even longer and longer. And then if it does finally run out, God will feed you with a raven if he has to. He'll put man up on the ground to feed you. He'll cause a flock of birds to come in where you're at that you can be fed. God will take care of his own people. David said, I am an old man. Hallelujah. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or my or his seed begging bread. And I tell you what, when all these things hit, none of his children will be out on the corner begging for pennies. They'll be on their knees praying. And that's, that's the same way in any country. Any country. They need to be teaching their people to pray and look to God and trust in Him. Hallelujah. Because I tell you what, man's arm is going to fail you. The flesh man arm is going to fail you. It is. We not, we've got to rely on God. We've got to believe in Him and trust in Him. And it says right here, it says, And turn in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. You've got all kind of mess out here. You've got gay churches. You've got all this mess saying that they're okay. God is with them. But I tell you what, my word tells me that it is an abomination unto God. And it's an abomination. I don't care how many buildings that they call them temples. It don't make them a temple of God. They are temples of devils. Hallelujah. Yes, it'll be soon upon us. That I can even be put in jail for preaching like this. But so be it. God will be with me and help me. 
I am always going to speak truth. I'm always going to preach the truth. Hallelujah. Lay it down. Because I'm telling you, if I don't do it, children of God, He is going to require it at me when I stand before Him. I want my hands clean. That's the reason that I preach the way I do. And I know that God is going to send a people here that's going to have a love for the truth. A love for the truth. And all these churches building big numbers with all this old smooth gospel. This old gospel don't cost anything. Yes, salvation is free, but it don't come cheap. It's not cheap. Hallelujah. Our master, ladies, life down if you could just really behold what he truly suffered. Oh, it breaks my heart. And there's a new religion going for it today of gothic salvation. It's evil. It's evil. Wickedness full of devils. And you got people that's falling after that. And they try to say, well, Jesus was gothic. And that's a lie of the devil. So straight from the pits of hell. Just because he was an outcast. He wasn't out, uh, outcast because he dressed so peculiar. I'm, I'm talking about so flamboyant with rings hanging everywhere out of his nose and his ears and, and red and purple hair, hallelujah, and blue hair, no matter what color hair that the gothic they go with, hallelujah. That is why they are outcast. It's because they make themselves so perverted. Jesus never was perverted, never. He was an outcast for standing for this truth. He said, my doctrine is not my own. He said, the doctrine that I give you is of my Father. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to cry loud against it as long as the Lord will give me breath. Hallelujah. And I do it out of true concern for the souls of mankind. I don't get up and try to beat on people. Hallelujah. I just lay the truth out. Then it's between them and God what they do with it. Hallelujah. You know, I, I am concerned for people and I have a love for people that God has put there because if He didn't put it there, it wouldn't be there. Same way with you. If God didn't put it in your heart, it would not be there in you either. Because I'm telling you, children of God, you don't do nothing in yourself. Nothing. Hallelujah. And anytime you think you do anything in yourself, you're going to set yourself up for a downfall. Hallelujah. And it goes on and it says, And delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And I tell you what, and that was talking right there, that ain't so much as words, which they probably did have a lot of filthy words. But he was talking about their lifestyle, what they produced in their trees, which I'm talking about their vessels, hallelujah. They were producing nothing but wickedness and evilness. And you, that's lot. I tell you what, sometimes my spirit gets so vexed by all the evil that is up on this nation. Hallelujah. And it causes me just to cry out that much more. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I'm going to keep sounding my voice as a trumpet until God says different. Hallelujah. I tell you what, if people will hear me, it would be well with them. Just like that scripture Sister Pam was sharing at the beginning. Hallelujah. No, God didn't set his shepherds to be rulers over his people, but to lead his people. Hallelujah. And when we lead, we lead by the leading of the Holy Ghost. But we can't force nobody to live this. And I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to waste my time. My time is too precious. Giving it to God. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, and I'm going to continue on as long as he gives me this mind. I know that I didn't give myself this mind. What is the mind of Christ? To do the will of the Father. What does it mean by doing the will? It means the desire of the Father. The desire of the Father. Whatever he desires in your life. That is what you're supposed to be pressing to want. No matter what it is. Hallelujah. And I know it's hard. It's hard. Believe me. If people just knew half of the testimony of what I have walked through since 2004. I tell you, you would know for a surety that I have a sound mind because of him and him only. If it wasn't for him, I would be off in Bolivar somewhere in the insane asylum. Hallelujah. But God keeps us. God keeps us no matter what we walk through. 
Hallelujah. But it goes on and it says, For that righteous man dwelleth among them in seeing and hearing, vexed in his righteousness.